Hello and welcome to a new game from CCC 11's round 1. This time we have Leela versus Dark Queen. This is game 68. They started with e4, d6, d4 and knight f6. So we have a pierce defense. And now we have knight c3, g6 and f4. The Austrian attack, a very very aggressive setup against black. Bishop g7, knight f3, castles. And now after bishop d3, black can choose between knight a6 and knight c6. These are the main moves. In this one we have knight a6. And it may seem tempting to snipe out that uh, knight with the bishop. And it is true that after pawn takes, black has these isolated pawn on the a5. But in the same time, this bishop can go to b7 and put pressure on e4. For example, castles bishop b7 and uh, black uh, gets a good play the rook can also go to this open file to put pressure on the queen side and uh, white is still better but uh, this is not the best line for white it is better just to ignore the knight and play castles and now we have c5 trying to open uh, the c file and also make this bishop stronger and sniping out that knight now would be right, right out bad for white because now black has this intermezzo switching to c takes on d4 attacking here and uh, black opens the c file and now after knight d4 pawn takes on a6 black is even better actually there is this uh, very dangerous diagonal king h1 and now after bishop b7 queen d3 and uh, rook c8 black's position is uh, very nice he has a pressure on the c-file and this bishop is now also unrestricted and can attack these squares in white's queen side. So very very nice position for black. Bishop a6 not good. Instead we have d5 keeping things closed. And this is now the end of the book. And here now after rook b8 intending to uh, make b5 work. Lila already evaluates this position at plus 0 0.75 for white so much better for white actually we have now king h1 bishop g4 and here lila played h3 to force this bishop to take the knight we have rook takes and now knight c7 and now b5 can be played so lila stopped that with a4 we have a6 still trying to get this in but now after a5 b5 is not really good well black can get it in if he wants to but white can take on passant and then this pawn on a6 is uh, isolated and weak. It's already attacked twice. And this wouldn't be so great for black. In this position, the main move is actually e6, trying to open some files and uh, trying to, uh, to make this knight work. But we have knight d7 instead. And Lila now replied with knight d2. It is time to play c3 and uh, blunt this bishop on this diagonal. We have e6 now, pawn takes, f takes, and now after c3 we have rook f7, planning to play queen e7, rook f8, and put a lot of pressure on f4 on this open file now. We have bishop e3, queen e7, queen d2, Lila completes her development, and now d5, trying to make this knight work. If pawn takes here, then uh, knight takes is good for black. So Lila played here e5, again keeping things closed, and trying to uh, keep a pawn here so that this knight doesn't have good squares. We have now rook f8. And in this position, thanks to these rooks, uh, having a lot of pressure on f4, g5 would be already a good move for black. So Lila played here knight g1. And she's intending to meet g5 now with rook e1. When this rook is in a position to defend here, for example, if pawn takes here, then after bishop takes, this pawn on e5 is now defended twice and all is good and uh, there are no tactics with knight takes or bishop takes since this rook on f3 is also guarded by the knight on g1. So g5 not that effective. We have c4, bishop back and now knight c5 eyeing these light squares here, especially the e4 square. This is where the knight wants to go and if the bishop takes then uh, d5 again gets um, available for the other knight so lila doesn't really want to take here and she could take on c5 with the other bishop but this is not really good because now if the queen takes 
this pawn is suddenly mobile and black threatens all the time to push it after something like knight b5 and uh, he can also increase pressure on f4 with bishop h6 so it is much better to keep the bishop this is also defending f4 and now this pawn is pretty much stopped and here in view of knight e4 Lila played now queen e1 and she already evaluates this position as plus two for white it's quite amazing we have now knight e4 and as i mentioned taking here not so great because uh, this knight lands here and black gets counterplay so uh, instead we have uh, h4 stopping g5 for good and now we have queen e8 well here dark queen wants to play bishop h6 to put pressure here on f4 but this fails because of f5 attacking this bishop and if the bishop takes then lila has now the intermezzo f6 attacking the queen and uh, after the queen moves let's say then uh, the rook can take on e3 and now suddenly this knight is in trouble lila is threatening to take it out and win a pawn knight doesn't really have good squares actually best here for black is just to to take on f6 and uh, sack this knight for two pawns but lila has knight f3 here guarding these dark squares stopping these pawns and that means that this knight on c7 doesn't have squares so it's pretty much out of the game so bishop h6 would be the idea but it doesn't work so we have queen e8 removing this queen from this f6 thing we have now knight h3 defending here bishop h6 and now rook d1 and king h8 and in this position lila considered that it's time to go for a winning end game and she played here bishop b6 attacking both this knight and the knight on e4 and now we have queen c6 bishop takes on c7 the rook is forced to take back so that after bishop takes and pawn takes this pawn is defended but after rook f2 lila is threatening rook d6 chasing that queen away and then picking up this pawn on e4 so this pawn is lost anyway so we have rook d7 rook takes queen takes and now after lila takes on e4 dark queen went for a queen exchange but the queen exchange doesn't help him his bishop especially is very very inactive and um, lila will get the upper hand in this end game we have queen takes pawn takes and now g3 and we can see how these pawns are uh, preventing this bishop from getting active uh, it can be activated like this but still lila's knight getting to e4 will dominate that bishop one thing working for dark queen though is that he can occupy now this only open file but it doesn't really help him he wants to either go here and pick this pawn up or give a check and go from behind but he also has weak pawns and lila played now rook e2 with the idea of picking up this pawn on c4 we have rook d5 rook e4 and now they take each other's pawns and here dark queen could maybe give a check here and then pin this pawn and try to win it but after rook c6 he would have these two pawns attacked and also rook c8 is threatened so instead he played c5 defending both of these pawns we have now king g2 rook b5 attacking this one king f3 and dark queen takes on b2 lila takes on c5 and again this rook c8 is uh, is threatened here and it's a real threat because if let's say dark queen plays rook a2 then after this check and king g7 lila would have knight f2 threatening knight g4 rook c7 check and then picking up the bishop so this is a real danger that's why dark queen preferred to uh, to guard the back rank and now we have rook a5 rook b6 and knight f2 and lila is bringing the knight into the center and also the king and now we have rook a4 h6 c4 king e8 c5 king d7 and now after king c4 and bishop e7 we have rook a1 bishop f8 and now lila planted this knight on d6 of course if dark queen takes it then this gives uh, lila a protected passed pawn so that's not good instead we have h5 and now rook b1 and lila's idea is quite simply to go to b8 and from there to g6 and pick up this pawn on g6 
So we have bishop e7, and after rook b8, the bishop blocks the eighth rank. Rook a8 now, bishop b6 attacking here. This pawn is pinned, so the knight has to go to e4 to defend. And now the bishop goes back. We have rook a7 check, but now the bishop blocks again. So it's not easy to go to the king side with that rook. We have now rook b7, king c8 forcing the rook away. Bishop a5, rook a1 now, bishop back, rook a2. Bishop e7, knight d6 check again, king d7, and now rook b2. And here comes now round two. This uh, rook tries uh, to get in again. We have bishop d8, and now rook b8. And this looks similar as before, but it is not, because now it is black's turn, and that's his problem. There are no good moves here for black. It's pretty much in Tsukzwang here. If the bishop moves, then of course the rook gets behind the pawn. If king c7, then rook b7 is mate. And if the rook moves, then uh, Lila has rook a8 attacking here. And after rook back, king b4 simply again passes the turn to black, which doesn't have good moves after something like king c7, rook a7. And uh, the rook gets behind the pawn anyway. So this is not good. What can uh, Dark Queen do here? Well, she just quite simply gave up this pawn on g6, played bishop a5. So we have now rook g8, bishop b6, knight e4 again, bishop d8, and now Lila finally takes the pawn on g6. And from here on it's it's quite easy. Lila will play g4 and unblock the h pawn, which will become a, a, a piece. We'll have to see what kind of piece it will be. We have bishop e7, g4 now h takes h5 rook back rook takes on g4 rook f8 h6 rook f7 and now knight g5 forces the rook back to the eighth rank h7 rook h8 and after rook h4 a5 rook h6 and a4 we have knight f7 forcing the rook away from the corner and finally lila promotes the h pawn we have a3, Dark Queen sneakily tries to promote this pawn, but Lila plays king b3 to stop that. We have rook takes finally, rook takes, and bishop takes on c5, and Lila is a rook up and uh, has a completely winning endgame, of course. Knight g5, bishop e3, rook h7 check, king c6, and now knight takes on e6, a2, king takes, and now bishop f2. Rook a8, bishop e3, and now f5. And slowly these pawns move forward. Here the king is attacking this one. We have king b3, so Lila gives up some material, but Dark Queen doesn't want the pawn. We have rook g8 now, bishop e3, rook c8, king e4, rook e8. Finally, Dark Queen takes a pawn. Knight c7 now, and after bishop f4 attacking this pawn. Lila decides to give up the knight in order to promote the spawn on e6. We have bishop takes and now after e7 and king f6, here comes rook c8, threatening in the same time to promote this pawn and to take this bishop. We have king takes on e7, rook takes on c7, and this is an elementary endgame now, which um, Lila manages to win shortly. We have rook up. King d3 and now rook e7 winning another tempo. Rook d7 and slowly restricting the black king. We have rook d2 check, king a3, rook e2, king a4, and now finally mate on a2. Another very, very nice game played by Lila. I would like to thank to Rene, Adolf, Barry, Mark, Gary, Guilherme, Sebastian, Todor, and Radu for their support. Please subscribe, like, and share, and check out some of these other videos. Thanks for watching, and see you soon. Bye-bye.